Yes, let's come together. Focus. <laughs> okay, my name is Crystal Nielsen. I am from Northwest Nazarene University in Nampa, Idaho. It is, well, I call it a suburb of Boise. Um, people who've lived in Nampa forever probably don't like that, but I'm a transplant from California. They don't like that either. But I've lived there for 15 years now, and I consider Idaho just as much home as where I grew up in Arizona. So anyway, uh, in case you didn't know, this is the session on Ready, Set, Interact, Engaging Students Through Interactive Video. So how many people remember the talking heads? Remember when we all first started using video and it was just the you know Ferris Bueller's teacher <laughs> Bueller anyone um, and then we were also seeing a lot of really really long videos um, especially the ones where people would, would want to just record their lecture from their face-to-face -face course and just throw that up there and call that an online course um, not very helpful and I think that led to some students being very frustrated with video and a lot of times they're pretty bored with it and so they're not really engaging with it and you spent all that time creating your videos only to have students not even watch them and so you're frustrated as well so let's talk about a better way for students to use video and that is um, a way to post comments right on the timeline of the video they can also ask questions, maybe say, I was really wondering about such and so. Um, and in some, some platforms, they can also answer quiz questions that you've created for them. This turns out better for you because these platforms also allow you to track whether students are actually watching the videos. And then in uh, the platforms that I've also seen, you can track how long the students watched the videos. So I have a, a question. How many of you have been using video quizzing tools um, already? Anybody? Okay, one. How many of you are Canvas users here? Quite a few. Anybody else on like Blackboard? Um, has anyone used Edpuzzle? Okay, I see some heads nodding. Okay, so. And I should point out, if you have any questions along the way, just go ahead and raise your hand and, and ask and, and contribute your own ideas as well. So let's talk a little bit about Canvas Studio by Instructure. Instructure is the parent company, in case you didn't know. Um, and it started out um, being called ARC, but it's now called Canvas Studio. And this is just a screenshot from uh, a British literature course where the instructor did have rather a long video um, lectures, like 49 minutes long. But you notice here, these little blue dots on here, that's where the students are entering comments into the uh, timeline. And they're saying, well, did the Anglo-Saxons mainly build in wood because that was their main resource or blah, blah, blah. Well, that was my thought as well. When I researched this, could you believe that a student would actually <laughs> take the learning content and go do something else on their own? That's pretty amazing. And then the instructor can go in and see uh, not only a composite or aggregate um, timeline, if you will, of how much of this video did my students as a whole watch in this course, but also she can zero in on each individual student and see that, okay, Jared watched the entire video. Joseph, he got tired after about five minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So are they in K or are they responding to prompts or in, in this particular instance? In this particular video uh, screenshot, they were just watching the video, but they could enter comments and questions as they went. Yes? You're using the same video in over and over every quarter is these comments that are erased each quarter yes. so that students only see the number on class. Correct. Yes. Yes. Good questions. 
Uh, since I'm also doing a session tomorrow on accessibility, I'll throw in a little plug here, and that is that the Canvas Studio tool also allows you to um, build in captions automatically. It, it, it'll uh, generate automatic captions that, like YouTube, are about 85% correct, and then you can go in and edit them um, to, to make them complete. And it's a good idea to have student workers do that rather than spending all your time doing that editing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can Kenny upload this sort uh, sort of files? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I'll be demonstrating Canvas Studio uh, and Edpuzzle after a little bit, but um, I just wanted to give you this overview. So, um, I'm sorry. What was your comment just now? Um, can you upload? Upload. Yes. Yes, you can. Um, with Canvas Studio. Um, if you embed YouTube videos, you cannot um, then edit the captions right in there. It's like Canvas Studio and YouTube are kind of not talking to each other. And so you can go out to a site such as amara.org and work on the captions and then upload them into Canvas Studio. Okay. So here's an example of a video quiz in Canvas Studio. And again, we have these blue dots on here, but this time, you probably can't see back there, there's little question marks there. Those are where the instructor has created quiz questions. So here, for example, Sarah Josepha Hale accomplished several things in her life. What do they include? And it's a multiple answer question type. Is it raining? Or can you start to see the students' responses? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Yes. It does not go into the grade book. It's more just for practice quizzing. Um, but yes. Excuse me. Do you see the same kind of results? Like who did it and how much that you see of how much they do? Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here's an example um, from the student's view. The student watched 50%, the student was me when I was making my slides. So <laughs> the student got three out of six points, and how long did I take? Uh, what my score was with that correct answer or not. And now we'll take a quick look at Edpuzzle, unless there's other questions about Canvas Studio. Okay, so Edpuzzle is a free platform on the web, edpuzzle.com. And it's very similar, except that Edpuzzle does not allow for just students to enter comments or questions on the timeline. Edpuzzle is only a video quizzing tool. But it is free, so there is that. You see the question marks on the timeline here. As um, another feature of it, you can actually add a comment that makes the video pause so students have to come over and, and like maybe, hopefully not, but maybe you uh, created your video last spring and something has changed in your assignment or new information has come out and you want to add a little comment in there. You could make the students pause, listen to that comment that says, well now updated information is blah, 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 blah. And you can see here that this is a multiple choice question. There's also feedback that you can add with each question and that's also possible in Canvas Studios to add feedback. And this is from a student view. Uh, the student, when they come in, they can see, okay, there's several questions in here that I'm going to have to answer. And here's the time marks that are on them. As the instructor, you can um, decide whether the ed puzzle, whether the students can actually skip ahead or not. Um, we all know that in a situation like this, students are probably likely to just to go to the question and see if I can answer it real quick. So, okay. And then here is a shot of the analytics. Here are my students' names. How much of it did they watch? What grade did they get on the quiz if they did it? 
and turned in or not. This, uh, I didn't necessarily care for this aspect of Ed Puzzle, if I may say that. Um, when I was going through this as a student, even though I answered all of the questions and it, I waited till the end of the video, it seemed like I was done and then I clicked out and whatever. And I came back in and I said, you didn't turn it in. Well, I didn't see a submit button. But, but what it was wanting me to do was watch the entire video and then at the very end it would say, okay, now you're done. So, good accountability tool. Here is some more analytics for the student. No, this is for the instructor, sorry. Grade 50 out of 100, video watched 20%, how many correct responses. Number of times the student watched each section of your video. Well, you can see that Chris, who was me, um, kind of skipped around a few times and just answered the question. Matilda, however, she watched the entire video and some segments she watched twice so she could get those questions right. Okay, Edpuzzle does integrate into learning management systems, including Blackboard, Canvas, Google Classroom, Moodle, PowerSchool, and Schoology. The basic plan for Edpuzzle is free. You can get um, a version that would be like for your entire school, but the basic plan is free. You can have up to 20 videos on your account with the free version. Any questions about it, Puzzle? Okay. Yes? Well, I have a I guess I have a question when I get about Canvas Studio. What mm -hmm. is the pricing on Canvas Studio? Mm -hmm. And is it, I assume it's an app? Like yes. Studio, yes. So um, our university has, has added on Canvas Studio. We were actually a beta tester for them, okay. uh, including the video quizzing tool. We were a beta tester for that. Um, but it is a, a site-wide license that we have for that. So, yeah. Yes? Um, is it used in Kaltura? Is Canvas using Kaltura or Kaltura is separate? Yes, yes. Actually, the Canvas Studio mm -hmm. mechanism, at least for screen capture, is based on Screencast-O-Matic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and actually, we could, we could do a whole lot that you want to see here. Um, I've kind of dedicated the rest of the time to just playing in there and, and seeing what it can do. Um, I have a headset and webcam if you want me to do a live demo of recording. Um, so we can do whatever you'd like. Was there any other questions? Yes. You, no, they, uh, you, you get it, you generate a class and then it's just you send them the link and they go in there and it, it doesn't, this is more like a tool that's for practice again, um, but it's, it's, um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, yes, they click the link. Mm -hmm. Right, right, yeah. It, it, it lets you do nicknames, yeah. which I thought was interesting. But you'll have a chance to do that. You'll have a chance to do that in just a second. Any other questions before we move on? Which one is your go-to platform? Canvas Studio. Um, because you have it. Yeah, yeah. I discovered Edpuzzle before we um, signed up for Canvas Studio, but because we were beta testing Canvas Studio right after that, it just became, it, and the video quizzing is still fairly new. Um, they've only come out with the video quizzing maybe in the past four or five months. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. What is, do you have any comparison between like Edge Puzzle and Studio and H5P? Only you can do that in H5P, but I don't know what you're saying. I have not used H5P. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I, I think there's another session at this conference on H5P. I think so. Yeah. 
Okay. So if you um, would like to go try this out, go to tinyurl.com slash nwelearn hyphen studio. And then go to modules and video embedded in a page. And we learn slash or dash studio. Let me go back to it. Right here. Tinyurl.com slash NWE Learn dash studio. This is like a shell. I yes, this is a Canvas course that is just open to the public. So we should all be able to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so if you go to modules and then did I forget to make this public? I had a dollar for every time I've done that. Okay, yes. I'm an instructional designer. If I had a dollar for every time faculty have asked, how do I make my course public? Yeah. Video embedded in a page. So with Canvas Studio, you can upload these videos to a page, a discussion, uh, an assignment. So there's several different areas um, where you have the rich content editor, you can upload these videos. So this is a sample um, page, like for a reading assignment. This week, read the following in your textbook. And then interactive lecture. Now notice watch the following lecture I have prepared for you. I make it that kind of a wording just so that uh, students feel that personal touch mm -hmm. of the instructor presence that, oh, they, the, the instructor did this for me. I also include how long it is, especially if you're having a, a class with non-traditional students. You know, they've got five minutes to do something in the class before they have to go pick up their kids from soccer. And so that's why I get the time. Okay. I also include a link to the Canvas resource page that tells them how to enter comments and questions. And here's my video. <clears throat> So if we start watching, I don't know if there will be any audio from this. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, the, the, the Wi-Fi is just having really a lot of fun here. but. Uh, Anyway, you get the idea. If any of you would like to enter comments on that timeline, feel free. It's going to be down here. Did I not set that up for comments? I probably didn't. <laughs> Do you see a timeline? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be able to go to this link after the session and go in and play with it. I'll keep this open for a while. So, yeah. I did not upload captions for this video, um, but I can show you how I would do that. 
So since the Wi-Fi is not necessarily uh, being very helpful right now, let me go ahead and go into instructor mode and show you how I would uh, fix that. <coughs> Factor authentication. And it's not going to do it. It's trying. Okay. Northwest eLearn demo is my course. <coughs> so if I go to Studio here in the navigation, I actually have two different locations for Studio in my Canvas account. One is over here in the main <coughs> navigation. That's where I'm going to see all of my uh, studio videos that I've uploaded or embedded um, in my account. And then this one is specific to this course. So if I select the one that I want, sorry, I went ahead of myself, that's a quiz. Unfortunately, a, a, our instance of Canvas does not allow anonymous people to be in the course to take the quiz. So you won't have that aspect. But. Okay. Hopefully I won't have to listen to myself again. I think this is the other quiz. So when the video is rolling, mm -hmm. like you got viewed right here, it doesn't pause where the questions are? No. Okay. So you just listen to it, you hear a question, and that's when you respond to Actually, no, it does pause. Yeah. It pauses and it brings the question up yeah. for you. Yeah. 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 Well, don't you love technology? Okay. Okay, so let me show you these four tabs that are available on the Canvas Studio video. The details tab. Now, my, my original file that I created was an MP4 that I had very abbreviated title, file name. But then I come in and I do edit details and I gave it a, a fuller title and then demonstration of Canvas Studio. Um, if I am embedding from YouTube, anything that's in those comments area from YouTube uh, will come in under this area right here. So you can go in and edit all of those. The comments, this is where the students have um, entered their comments. Test student said, I love this poem. Another test student commented and then deleted his post. And then a different test student wrote a little bit more. And you can see where they posted on that timeline right here. You can write replies there if you wish. And then insights. So 
So this is the aggregate for how much of the video everyone watched, and it was a minute 30. <laughs> Not everybody watched the whole thing. And then if I go to test student, test student watched a minute 30. How much did Crystal watch? Crystal didn't watch anything. Bad Crystal. And then captions. I purposefully did not upload the captions yet so you can see how I do this. It asks me which language is spoken and I'm going to say English. And then I request. And the request is not going to a human being, it's just the algorithm that is going to generate it. And it usually just takes a few minutes. Depends on the length of the video. If it's, I mean, if it's a really long video, it'll take probably a good hour. But um, for something like this, probably just two minutes or so. Uh, someone had asked a question about an SRT file. If I have generated the captions elsewhere, I can upload them. And it's asking me again, which language do I want to use? After these captions are generated, uh, it doesn't actually publish them yet. It gives me the opportunity to review and publish the captions first. And I often will go in and publish the captions so at least the basic ones are there. And then I have my TAs go back in and edit them for the punctuation and all that stuff. Yes. So our university uses Canvas, but not Canvas Studio. Are they doing two different <laughs> things? <I> yes. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. yes. Right. Right. Yep. Okay. Review and publish. And so it's just a matter of editing as we go and then I can publish right there. The little shish kebab icon here, I can edit, download, replace, or delete those captions if I need to. Let me go back out to my studio page over here. Well, you're going to see a whole gob of videos from all the classes where I work with and so on and so forth. Um, let's say I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but you record a video and the thumbnail for the video, you're kind of going, huh, um, <laughs> I hate that. So in Canvas Studio, you can come over here to this shish kebab or hamburger menu or three dot icon, whatever is your term, and uh, replace the thumbnail. So you can go maybe create a little image on your, on your computer and then upload that. I can share this out. I can share this actually um, with individuals. Uh, so this is how I share it with my TA and I'll give her editing power um, so that she can go in and do that and it'll show up under shared with me for her. I can also create it as a public link so they don't necessarily have to be Canvas users to be able to watch the video. And that is what we did with um, some videos down here. Um, has anybody ever heard Todd Zakrysek? Outstanding keynote speaker. If you have a chance to get Todd Zakrysek at your school, get him. Um, so he, he did the work, faculty workshops at NU a couple years ago. And uh, we recorded those lectures and then we put them, put them here into Canvas Studio. And our faculty throughout the year would reference those um, to do in-service in departments and so on. It was great. Okay. Next I can show you the quizzing feature. Let me go back out to the quiz in the course. So video with a practice quiz embedded in a page, and again, you won't be able to do this because our Canvas instance requires that you have a login. But this looks exactly like that other page did, and I already took this quiz, but it's saying, well, you've already submitted it. Do you want to retake it? Sure, I'll retake it. 
or I can just view my results right here. So here I am as a student seeing my results and there's an item analysis there. Oops. Sorry, this is the instructor view. Retake the quiz. And I'm not hearing it. Is anybody else hearing it? Great. Okay. <laughs> I can hear it very. Oh, it's because I have the headset in. That's why. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm caught. There we go. Okay. So notice that when I came to the first quiz question, it just pauses and gives me the question. And let's say, what was the color of the lamb's fleece? We'll say as green as, oh no, I don't want to do the last one. That one's really cute. As purple as the one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. And continue. And I chose that one so that you could see what the feedback is going to look like a little bit later. So now as I keep watching, I'm going to skip ahead and go to the next question. This one is that um, multiple answer type. So I did not know that the woman who wrote Mary Had a Little Lamb was also the person who dogged five presidents to get us the Thanksgiving holiday. So there you go. Learn something new every day. And that's why we eat turkey and that. <laughs> yes. Well, that's why we were getting the pauses and questions because we're not students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Can you show us the question types? Yes. Well, it's only these three. Oh, it's only these yes. three. Yes. True, false, multiple choice, or multiple answer. Yeah. And notice that I could click rewatch if I want to watch that part again to make sure I get the question right. Continue. Thomas Edison was actually involved in um, something to do with Mary Had a Little Lamb. His first recording using the phonograph, he shouted, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. Very cute. Okay. So we'll say that he created the phonograph and the telegraph, which I know is wrong. Continue. And... If you get a chance to watch, it's a really cute video. I say that the lamb became a professor of archaeology at Boston College after it had so much fun at school. Okay. Hooray, you finished the video and answered all the questions. Submit quiz. View results. Okay. Maybe it's just still thinking. Any questions about Canvas Studio at this point? Can you give me an idea of how much it costs? Mm -hmm. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not our Canvas administrator. Um, and I don't think that we received any kind of price break, even though we were a beta school. Um, our Canvas administrator tends to want to try everything that's new. so. It's so, exciting. Yes. Right. In Canvas Studio, you cannot do an open ended question, but in Edpuzzle, you can. Yeah. Yes. Is there any storage limitations? So, I mean, so I guess whatever faculty member is limited to in Canvas is what applies. If, if, that, if you limit faculty in terms of storage? That's a good question. Um, for that, I would probably go out to the um, K-12 
campus instructor guide, which, sorry, Canvas Studio Guide. If you are a Canvas user in your navigation, you probably have a help icon. And you can go out to search the Canvas guides. And there is a guide that is specifically for Canvas Studio. There we go, Studio Guide. I don't know if you've ever used the Canvas guides, but they are pretty thorough, very good um, screenshot illustrations and so on. Okay. Introduction, what is Canvas Studio? Studio account, Canvas in Studio, and then the Studio site. Can you guess that they roll that But you could, I'm sure you could talk to your campus administrator at your school or, or your council that decides what technology platforms to get and, and see what you can do. Um, I've not come across any kind of limitations on number of videos or anything. And as an instructional designer, I have gobs. So, um, but there, there may be some, I don't know. I would say about 85% accurate, just like YouTube is. And where it falls short is in the punctuation, just like YouTube. Um, very rare, well, I shouldn't say that. It depends on the topic. <laughs> we, we redesigned an, an astronomy course this summer, and my TA would giggle all the time at mm -hmm. all the mistakes that <laughs> it had made um, from, from the captions that were automatic. Right, right, because it's not every day that you hear astronomical terms. So. But British literature, that's a little bit more common. Yes? Does the quiz name uh, integrate into Canvas's gradebook? After a fashion. So I showed you a video with a practice quiz. And there is also one that will go into the gradebook ish. I mean, it goes into the grade book, but it's, um, it's not quite as robust as like a regular quiz because it's not necessarily giving points for each question. Um, it's just a um, blanket, like 10 points for completing that kind of thing. Yes, so here's the assignment settings for that. I apologize that everything is so slow. <laughs> okay. So I did set it up as an assignment. And I said that it was worth 10 points. And you do use the external tool feature and you go out to your external tools on the settings and find Studio and bring that in. The external the tools question? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I want to use Studio as an assignment, yeah. uh, I need to set it up as an external tool. And the first time you do that, at least, you have to go to settings and say, um, find the studio external tool, which would be under apps. So that's still working. Right? Yeah. It's still thinking. I'll go to installed because I know I have it installed. And it's not showing up. But it is there. 
Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good question. Okay. Back to that module. The video quiz as a graded assignment. I can grade it in Speed Grader. So when I come down here, Speed Grader. And in this case, I didn't do any um, submissions, but if I wanted to, I mean, if I had that, could enter the grade, add a comment, do the video comments, all that normal stuff that's in SpeedGrader. Any questions about what you've seen? No, I knew. I always have lots of questions, so. <laughs> Speed Grader is part of regular Canvas or Canvas Studio? Regular Canvas. Regular Canvas, okay. Yes. And it's just, you can use Speed Grader with Canvas Studio. Yeah, yeah. But did you notice the distinction that I can't assign individual points to all the different questions? It's just a flat, yeah. Just another capture question. Mm -hmm. I haven't had the need to do that, but I'm working with a Spanish instructor now, so who knows? <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Yes. So, would you say this is being used primarily as an engagement tool or an assessment or both? And if, if so, have you found this is your life? Hey, this is something for your life. It's a very good environment. We only have a handful of faculty who have started using the video quizzing so far because it is still fairly new. And so this, this semester was the first semester it was really available. Um, we do have faculty uh, such as that Beowulf video that I showed you at the very beginning who are using this to do their videos um, and make sure that students are watching those. Uh, the, that, the analytic feature where they can go in and see who watched it and for how long is a big draw. Um, but Canvas Studio can be used in other ways. Students can use Canvas Studio, um, for, for instance, to respond to a discussion prompt. Um, or we had, we had a professor who was going to be out of town at a conference teaching a face-to-face -face course. He asked me to show his students how to use our self-service video studio to go in and record themselves doing a PowerPoint presentation and narrating it and so on so that they would have something to watch as a class each other's presentations while he was down in Costa Rica. Um, and it worked out great. So we have another professor who has students do a one minute video blog at the end of each week. Um, for them to reflect on their learning. And she tells them if it is, it has to be one minute, and if it's less than 40 seconds or more than 80 seconds, she will not watch it. So they have to be really, uh, because honestly, when you grade something that's a video rather than the text-based, it can be take a little bit longer time. So, um, But that's a great way to get students engaged in, um, you know, <laughs> If you want to do quizzing that way, just a virtual kind of quizzing, to say, okay, you're going to have to come into to Canvas Studio and respond to these questions and then upload your, I mean, especially if you're also using Respond Us Monitor, which we are, um, where, where they have to show that they don't have anybody in the room to help them. They show their, their camera all the way around, the 360 to show that they don't have a second monitor right here or a phone. And uh, especially for like our, our um, survey and our uh, survey of art and music instructor, he was really frustrated that kids could just go to Shazam to find um, the, 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 find out, you know, oh, that was Stravinsky or whatever. So um, he uses Respondus Monitor to make the students and they have to actually hold their hands up while they are taking their test and, and then answer their questions so they can't. <laughs> yes. 
Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you just got to find a way to keep the integrity going. Okay. Do you want to see me actually record something in ARC, or Canvas Studio? Sorry. Or should we move on to Edpuzzle? Edpuzzle? I'd like to see Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle. Okay. Edpuzzle will be a little bit different because it's free. it's free. So if we go back to our slide, that URL is tinyurl.com slash Northwest eLearn dash Edpuzzle. Tinyurl.com slash Northwest eLearn dash Edpuzzle. It's going to ask you to enter a nickname. I don't care if you use your initials or your real name or like in your Google Docs and say you're an, an anonymous hippo. I, I, I find offense at that. I don't know. <laughs> Tinyurl.com slash Northwest eLearn dash Edpuzzle. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So I had to create a class, which I called Northwest eLearn Ready, Set, Interact. It's the name of my class. You notice there's a class code. I haven't, I haven't found that I ne necessarily needed that class code. Maybe there's a way that, that would need it at some point, but um, just providing students the link seemed to work okay. So my nickname, I'm going to say, uh, I'm not going to be Chris. I'll be. Um, how about my middle name, Diane? And this is an open class, um, so I did that specifically because of the conference. There is another way to create a class where it is more uh, specific. And again, Edpuzzle does not have the feature where you can just uh, watch the video and enter comments and questions. With Edpuzzle, it's a video quiz tool. Uh, yes? Someone had mentioned open-ended questions. Could an open-ended question be like, what's a comment right here that you might have? Like, kind of period yes. checkpoint? Yes. Cool. Yes. OK. So let me uh, show this one. And I have a note that starts about five seconds in. I'm going to take off the headset here. Okay. I'm sorry the sound is not coming up, but the video paused so that the student would have to um, either play the note or say skip. That's a good question. Let me see if I can uh, get those. Oh, I wonder about that. Because I thought I heard it at one point. I did remove the headset, but I'm wondering if it's, um... This is an audio note, simply to get your attention. I just want to tell you that I love the color purple, and I'm so glad I found this template. <laughs> okay, so that was my note, and now I have to click continue to keep going. You're probably familiar with the poem. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Okay. I'm going to skip ahead to the questions. So this is the uh, multiple choice question. We'll say as green as a Martian this time. And notice the feedback that it generated. 
based on whichever question. I could just enter generic feedback. That would be for all the question sets or specific ones. Now, I'm not going to be able to uh, see my analytics at the end of this because I'm not watching the entire video. So who so. wrote the poem? Okay. It was published in a book of poetry by Sarah. Okay, but I'm going to go on to the next one. This is that open-ended question. Notice that I could put in a link here. There's a little bit of a, a rich text editor there. You can do bold, um, italics, um, or underline, and you can add links. And so this is the question field here where the students enter their comments. And I guess it really wants me to enter a comment. And then I click Submit. And then I click Continue. You may not know that Thomas Edison quoted from Mary Had. Sorry. You may not know that Thomas uh. Edison quoted from Mary Had a Little Link. Okay. And as I get going, there's a one last question. Professor of Archaeology. That's it for this week. Do well on the quiz. Okay, so you get the idea of, of that tool. Now I need to log in if you want to see those analytics um, or if you want to generate an account and, and do a pretend class in there, you can do that. Um, we have just a few minutes left. Do you want to see anything else with it? Just so the advantages of having the Canvas integration is just automating grading pretty much. Yes. Yes. Because this will do everything that will do, you just gotta like put it put the students, those are numbers and assign if you're grading. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And and the advantage with Ed Puzzle is that it does have the open ended question. Yeah. And the note feature. I find that their interface I just don't care for their interface as much because um, it just, it was confusing to, to navigate and get around and figure out, am I able to see the instructor, you know, the analytics or not? Um, it, it just, it was very confusing interface to me, um, whereas Studio seems pretty straightforward. Um, so I don't know if if Studio might be available in Canvas for Teacher, I kind of doubt it. Um, so, yeah. Do you know anything about the accessibility of this tool? Like, is it accessible with a screen reader? I'm pretty sure that they do have an accessibility statement. Okay. We'll go to edpuzzle.com. Maybe not. I thought I'd seen one. Maybe it was under Help Center. They do have they do have a lot of interesting um, aspects to their Help Center here. For instance, they they ask for parental consent if you were like teaching the K-12 class. So, um, okay, yeah, that is where I saw it. I have found that sometimes just because a platform has a VPAC doesn't necessarily mean that it's <laughs> oh, yeah. accessible. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. They just state what they don't. <laughs> 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 yeah. Right. Okay, I can log in and show you that uh, instructor view if you would like. See, there's no, there's no navigation to get me right back to the login page. That just seems very, because I'm stuck in the help center. And so, 
have to go up to it. I mean, I have to go to a new tab to get in. And this is still the uh, student view. So I, I just find it clunky. But um, <laughs> if I had spent more time with it, I could probably um, get more used to it. But, uh, but if you don't have Canvas Studio mm -hmm. yeah. and you want to use this as a practice tool, then it's a good. I'll have to explore H. <laughs> H5P to see how that works as well. That might be a little bit better um, navigation than a puzzle. So. I found it kind of confusing because there's just so much mm. in the waves there. Mm -hmm. There's so much in the view. This is just one piece of it. Mm -hmm. Actually, I can go back to uh, the PowerPoint and show you. Oh, that's my last screen. So. <laughs> Well, I was going to go back to the um, screenshot. <clears throat> We're right about at 4.30 if you need to leave. So here's the screenshot from the instructor view that showed me the students' names, how much they watched. I prefer the Canvas Studio version that shows me exactly where in the, in the timeline they watched. Because sometimes students skip around and it'll show me that they've skipped around. Um, the grade on their quizzing, when they watched it, and the turning in or not turning in. And yes. Puzzle does seem to have a prevent skipping option, though. Yes, yes, it does. I, I created a version with the prevent skipping, and it doesn't matter how many times you try to move your cursor to move ahead, it just takes you right back to where you were. So, yeah. When Canvas Studio does not have that, but uh, Canvas Studio has been growing and, and evolving. So I wouldn't be surprised if Instructure adds more features, such as the prevent skipping and so on. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much for your attention.